In today's video, we're going to talk about the VBE multiplier, uh, what it is, how it works, and what it can be used for. The VBE multiplier, also known as an amplified or adjustable diode, is a circuit that's used to create a user-desired uh, voltage drop. Uh, some applications would include uh, like a DC level shifting or DC offset shifting, uh, oftentimes between stages of an amplifier to maybe take the output of one amplifier and shift its DC operating point so it matches the uh, appropriate common mode input range of the following stage. Another very common use and probably one of the most common uses is to set up the bias for push-pull output stages and we'll take a look at that uh, in a little bit. Uh, and the reason that this is a useful circuit is that if you simply use diodes to provide some kind of a DC voltage or level shift, you have some limited flexibility. Uh, you can put one diode in series or with two diodes or three diodes or maybe use a Zener diode, but each of these gives you essentially you know, a discrete multiple of diode drops or you're limited to the discrete values of Zener diode drops and that might not be the voltage drop you need. So by having an adjustable diode drop, uh, we can solve some of those issues. So let's take a look at how it works. Now, of course, one of the first things to consider is that if you simply take a bipolar transistor and connect the base to the collector, uh, this behaves very much like a diode, at least in the forward bias region. Uh, if you reverse bias uh, a diode-connected transistor like this, it will typically break down pretty early you know, about five or six volts typically. So it's not going to be really good as a rectifier, but it is often uh, works really well as a simple fo you know, forward bias diode. You know, it would have the same diode characteristic that you'd see with an ordinary two-terminal diode. And we can see that on the, you know, the curve tracer, if you will, here. Uh, I can see I've got about one volt per division uh, you know, horizontal scale here. And I can see right at about six tenths of a volt. Uh, this uh, diode, essentially, this diode-connected transistor here is turning on. Now, the VBE multiplier is made by simply putting a resistor across the base emitter junction and base collector junction. So let's take a look at this one step at a time. So if we start with our simple diode-connected uh, you know, transistor and then add a resistor from base to emitter, what's going to happen here? Well really, uh, what we're going to do is take this region where the diode was really not conducting at all and it's just going to look like a resistor. You know, until enough voltage you know, comes across this uh, device to turn the base emitter junction on, it just looks like a resistor. So we see this slope from that resistor. And then the diode turns on. And if we're operating up in this region up here, then you know, the resistor really has no effect. Okay, so, uh, so let's take a quick look at that on the scope. Now I'm zoomed in here a little bit, so if we take a look at uh, the flat part of this curve here, in fact, let's, let's expand that out a little bit so we can see it a little more clearly. So this is the, the spot where the diode is essentially turned off. If I take a uh, resistor and stick it across the junction, you can actually see, if you look carefully, I'll put it on and off. You can see how that's just kind of lifting that up, or basically you know, getting the, the slope of this is now equal to the resistor. In this case, it's just a 3.9K resistor that I've stuck in parallel with that junction. So as long as we're operating the diode uh, you know, in a region up here, the effect of that resistor is really negligible. Now, of course, the interesting things happen when we replace this short circuit with a resistor, like I've got shown down here. And if we set up these resistors such that the current flowing through them is much greater than the base current, we can say that the current in R1 is basically equal to the current in R2. And that makes the analysis uh, quite easy. Now since we know that the voltage across R1 is equal to a diode drop or a VBE drop, uh, we then can very easily you know, calculate what that current is. Then we also know what this current is and we can calculate that voltage drop as well. Uh, in the case where R1 is equal to R2, then we know that the voltage drop across this resistor is equal to VBE. The voltage drop across this resistor is also equal to VBE. So the total drop across this structure is equal to 2 times VBE. Now, of course, by adjusting one of these resistors with respect to the other, we can essentially create a voltage drop across here that is any desired multiple of the base emitter voltage. The case where this resistor goes to zero ohms, we have one VBE. As this resistor is made larger, we can increase this voltage linearly uh, with respect to that resistor ratio. You know, the math is shown here is actually quite simple, and it boils down to 
a simplified equation here where we say that the voltage across this structure is equal to VBE times 1 plus R2 over R1. So if R2 again is 0, that's just simply VBE times 1. If R2 was equal to R1, then this would be 1 plus 1 or 2, VBE times 2. We'd have 2 times VX. And by varying that ratio, we can essentially change what, where that corner is, where the diode turns on. And typically, we're not going to concern ourselves too much with the slope of this baseline here, which is just a function of those resistors, because we're typically going to be operating up in the region up here where it's acting more like a low impedance uh, diode. So let's go take a look at this on the scope. Let's start off by looking at the special case where R1 is equal to R2. If I pull out the short circuit that I have here, that is uh, between the collector and base, and replace it with an identical, in this case, 3.9K resistor, Okay. We can now take a look at the diode characteristic and instead of being about 0.6 volts where it turns on, we can see it's just about 1.2 or just slightly more than 1.2 volts. So now we've created this instead of being a single diode drop, like two diode drops. And of course if we vary uh, those resistors with respect to each other, we can adjust that diode drop back and forth. So let's show you that next. Now in this case I've simply created this little circuit on my uh, proto board. An 820 ohm resistor connected to a potentiometer with the wiper connected to the base. This would allow me to adjust you know, the wiper all the way to the top, in which case I'd have one diode drop because I have no resistance between the uh, base and collector, and I'd have 1820 ohms down here. So that would be a 1 VBE drop across here. And if we adjust the wiper all the way to the other direction, I'd have 1K and 820. And that would be VBE times 2.2. So by adjusting this pot back and forth, we can get any voltage drop that we want between 1 VBE and 2.2 VBE. Of course, the resistance that I've used across the base emitter in this circuit is lower than what I had shown in the previous example. So it's a lot easier to see the slope uh, in the essentially off region of the diode here because it's a lower resistor value. Uh, right now I've got the pot dialed with the wiper all the way to the top, so there's essentially zero resistance between base and collector, so they're basically shorted together. So we essentially have one VBE drop, and we can see here it's about, oh, about 0.65 or so, uh, 0 0.65, 0 0.7 volts or so voltage drop. And as we turn the pot up, we can see how we can essentially slide that uh, turn on voltage all the way up to, in this case, about 2.2 times VBE. Now again, you know, the slope down here doesn't really bother me so much because if we're going to be using this as an adjustable voltage drop circuit, we're going to be operating up in this area here. So I don't really care what's going on down here in the characteristic curve. But it's very easy to see how we can get any value of voltage drop that we want by simply amplifying the VBE voltage of a single transistor. So let's go take a look at how we can use this in a circuit to do some useful functions for us. So let's consider this very simple common emitter amplifier. We just have uh, the base bias set up by these two transistors here, our emitter and collector resistors, which are going to essentially set the gain of the amplifier. And we're just coupling a signal in from a function generator. We inserted our VBE multiplier in series between the load resistor and the collector. And since this is just going to look like an adjustable DC voltage drop, what we're going to do is generate our output signal uh, here at the load resistor, but also a copy of that down here shifted down DC-wise by the amount set by our VB multiplier. And we can see that on the screen. So if I reach over here and adjust the potentiometer, we can see that we can take channel 2 and just move it up or down by a desired amount by just adjusting that pot. Now of course, you know, well, what you might say, what is that useful for? Well, of course, this circuit isn't set up to move it more than about a volt or so, but um, you, know, you might have to line up the DC voltage of the following stage that this thing might be feeding into, uh, and this will allow you to kind of maybe adjust what that voltage drop might be. Now, of course, a more common uh, application for this is to set up a push-pull output stage. So let's look at that. So let's take this simple 
common emitter amplifier and now connect it up to a push-pull output stage. Uh, because the, this collector can't drive a low impedance load, but this push-pull output stage can. Now uh, with this push-pull output stage, what we're going to rely on is the fact that I'm going to drive the load, and it could be a speaker or some other low impedance load, I'm going to drive that load through emitter followers, which are much lower impedance than the load resistor that I have up here, so we'll be able to more efficiently drive that load. But uh, So for positive going swings, we want to basically power that load through this emitter follower, and for negative going swings, we'll yank the you know, current out of that load through this PNP emitter follower. Now in order to set this uh, push-pull output stage up properly, we need to adjust the voltage drop between them so that uh, the, these transistors are both just starting to turn on. You don't want them to turn on too far because we'll create a, a nice low impedance path across the supply and draw a lot of current. And we don't want to have these two transistors completely cut off because we'll create what's called crossover distortion where uh, both these transistors are off for a while and the voltage has to raise up a little bit one way or the other in order for one transistor to turn on the other one or the other one to turn on. Right, so I've connected up uh, my channel 3 probe here to uh, this point right here. I've connected up an AC coupled low impedance load and uh, right now I've got this potentiometer set nearly to the top or about to the top of the pot here where my voltage drop across my adjustable diode is only about 1 VBE. And we can actually see what I was talking about in terms of crossover distortion. You can see the output is going positive and then sits flat for a while. That's our crossover point where we're switching from the NPN device down to the PNP device. So what we'll do is turn this pot to increase the voltage drop between the bases of these two transistors to get rid of that crossover distortion. So as I turn that pot up, we can actually see the voltages here separating and the crossover distortion beginning to go away. And that's the proper way to kind of set up a voltage drop, or excuse me, the, the voltage bias on this output stage to minimize distortion. And you can actually hear that. So let's hook up a speaker and listen to it. Now you may be able to hear kind of the nice, pure, clean, uh, one kilohertz tone we're getting out here. If I start introducing that crossover distortion, you might be able to hear some raspiness come into the audio tone. Take a listen. Here how some of that raspiness has now come in. I'm not sure if that's going to come up on video or not. And as we turn, get rid of the crossover distortion, we can make that distortion go away. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, learned a little bit about what a VBE multiplier or amplified or adjustable diode circuit uh, does, how it works, and uh, at least one or two of the applications of where it might be used. Uh, thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Tell your friends. And uh, thanks again for watching.